All right, welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2018. We're gonna get ready to send this over to the, de uh, the interview desk, but for now, while they're getting that set up, we're gonna go ahead and read some more of your donations. Got $150 from Midna Navi, says second time donating. Thanks for fighting cancer in the coolest way possible. This goes to Ocarina file name being my dude. $20.18 from Joey Raccoon. Make that punch out happen, baby. One 2018 at a time. Just give you guys a quick status update on that. We are just, just over $8,500 away from the punch out incentive being met. We're so close, guys. We do have until the end of the Mega Man 1 through 3 team relay race. So get those donations in. Time is running out for that. If you want to see that happen, Zoward's absolutely beast. So we got to make that happen, guys. Got $200 from Camel Pope. Couldn't make it to the hotel this year, but have been working at, been watching at home. Keep speeding those runs. Strider Crump donated $50, said, For my Nan, I love you, and even though you didn't understand my gaming habits, you supported me through everything. I love Pokemon and love AGDQ. $300 from, another $300 from Joey Raccoon. This donation goes towards attempting to punch out cancer. Thank you very much for the donations. We are making our way there very quickly. We're now under $8,000 away from it, so keep them pouring in. We are going to make that incentive happen. $20 from Venthi. This is my second AGDQ, and it comes just weeks after my dad was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. My donation goes to Mike Tyson's punch out. Let's KO cancer's butt. $300 from Tommy Boy 78 making this donation in honor of my friend's daughter who has been battling cancer for the last year. Stay strong, Amanda. Absolutely, Amanda. Hang in there. Stay strong for us. Got $25 from Phoenix True Fire. Just got back from my grandfather's funeral. He lived to be 94. He was receiving radiation treatment for malignant tumors on his bladder, which was too much for his body to handle. I had planned a trip to AGDQ, but unfortunately couldn't make it due to this. If this donation is read, I'll donate another $25. We're sorry to hear that, Phoenix. Hang in there, we're all supporting you. $20 from Anonymous. Luckily, my partner beat brain cancer several years ago, and their eight-year-old daughter, Emma, who just started playing Pokemon Leaf Green this week, wanted to donate during a Pokemon game. Let's beat this terrible disease so future children will not have to worry about such a scourge. I apologize for not getting that in during the run, but... Anonymous donated $400. Game on. Want to watch that punch out, Ron? Lost my best friend to cancer, and I hope this helps others. $10 from Jamie102. Pokemon is the series that got me into gaming and is my favorite series of all time, so I had to donate during Black and White 2. My grandma is unfortunately losing her fight against colon cancer this year after a long and hard battle, but she never gave up hope for a moment and had the greatest and brightest attitude that I've ever seen. She's inspired me to embrace life through the good and the bad and live it to its fullest. The fact that I can watch amazing speedruns and help a great cause is incredible, and I know she'd be thrilled by how much we've raised. All right, sounds like they are ready to go with the interview, so I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Blecky and Zallard at the interview desk. Take it away, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, throwing it over here. We, that was a great run of Pokemon Black White. Um, coming up real soon, we have the Mega Man Relay Race. Now this is going to be something that everybody's been waiting for. This is like the number one event of the marathon for a lot of people. And then right after that, we're actually gonna be having Zallard playing Punch-Out and Super Punch-Out at the same time with the same inputs. Yep. That's ridiculous. 
Yeah. That's ridiculous. Because, I mean, at these, at these GDQ events so far, we've seen all of these kind of, like, interesting, quirky takes on the Punch-Out! series. Um, we saw blindfolded Punch-Out!, blindfolded Super Punch-Out!, and then a race of blindfolded Punch-Out!. Mm -hmm. So now, just to take, like, everyone was thinking, like, well, where can they take it from here? And then you wowed us with this. Where did this idea come from to play both games with the same inputs at the same time? Uh, so it's a funny story. Like, I was playing like the new ver the new version of it, like Animal Crossing on 3DS. As one does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I really liked that game, but the one thing that it kind of lacked was the, punch out. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, you could collect NES games and you could play them like straight up in your Animal Crossing house. So I. I put that, uh, I was kind of just playing it, and I'm like, huh, I have an idea. So you can, there's like a controller uh, called the Wavebird. It has different receivers, and what I decided to do is I plugged one into a GameCube and one into a Wii with Super Punch-Out on uh, Virtual Console, and I, try, I just tried messing with it, and I actually got really far, and yeah. That's insane. So, how did you go about practicing something like this then, as this event, as this event approached? Um, so I did that uh, that setup for quite yeah. a while. Um, there was another marathon, uh, a local one, uh, Calithon. Uh, I did this run there, and that was actually my submission video for. Oh, one okay. Year. Um, and I used that setup, but there there were some limitations because, like, sometimes it would drop inputs. Uh, based on how close the controller is to the receiver. And then there's also, uh, there's input lag, because both those ports have a little bit of input lag. It, it, it's not too bad, but it is definitely there, especially when you're playing it uh, on the original versions. Got it. Okay, so I want you to take me through this, because I can imagine, you know, you're fighting Glass Joe and... Um, What's uh, the first punch out? Uh, Gabby J. Gabby J. Oh, yeah. So Glass Joe and, and Gabby J at the same time. Um, and, you know, you could just mash through those guys, no problem. But even, and even maybe like um, Tyson and Gabby J would be no problem. But if you're fighting two difficult opponents at the same time, how do you possibly balance kind of... Tyson can knock you out at any point. Nick Bruiser is no pushover, obviously. So how do you kind of balance doing the two at the same time? So both Punch-Out! games do have a bit of downtime. I try to alternate okay. it, but I mean, both games are really chaotic. Both are wildly random. So every once in a while, you may see me fight a couple of folks at the same time, and that can be a bit scary, definitely. Yeah. Um, but whenever you use a star punch in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!, it does pause True. To punch out just because of the way both of the games are mapped to the controller. So do you use that to your advantage, or is it like you immediately unpause because you don't want that I, to happen? I do use it to my advantage. Okay. I have tried it uh, the simultaneous way, and it can work, but as far as consistency goes, like the randomness just yeah. it, it throws everything out of whack. Is, there, is one of the games longer than the other, so you kind of need to slow down, or you have kind of more luxury with one of the games? Um... So Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is longer, but due to the fact that Super Punch-Out can be paused, like Mike Tyson has no pause button, uh -huh, none right, whatsoever, right. because that's your uppercut button. Yeah. Um, Super Punch-Out ends up being the last game whenever I do this challenge. Um, but I get the best times as the games like approach each other. So like, if the games are about to finish at the same time, that's when I get like the optimal time okay. out of it. Okay, got it. Um, what about just like the different quirky bosses? Like I'm imagining maybe King Hippo or Narciss Prince, where you just need to, um, it's very hard to adapt because there's, even in a casual playthrough, there's a particular, particular strategy you need to go uh, into these guys with. So like how do you manage something like King Hippo where you can't, where you need to wait until his weak spot is exposed basically, meanwhile you're fighting someone in Super Punch-Out? So I mean, what I would do is I would set up something in Super Punch-Out, like a knockdown, to where the inputs okay. are kind of simple. And then I would go after King Hippo. Like, basically, this is an exercise in taking full advantage of the downtime yeah. in both games. Got There's it. action going on right, right. pretty much constantly throughout both games as a result. Yeah. So that's, that's mainly the way I'm, I'm handling it. Got it.
And does that go the same for something like these critical hits? Like in both punch out games, um, the uh, your enemies, off, your opponents often just have this weak point where it's critical you get a, get a punch in and they could go from full to zero. Um, so for those kinds of moments, uh, is it that same thing where you just kind of make sure that there's some downtime in the other game when you need to get that important punch in? Yeah, it, God. definitely. That makes total sense. Yeah, like for example, Ball Ball 2 and Mike Tyson's punch out, he's scripted to get up on a nine count and that's plenty of time in for a fight and super punch out. Mm -hmm. Like I could floor someone in that time. So I I seize that opportunity whenever I can to Got it. minimize that time. Like the like when you do like a playthrough of either either game, you're probably expecting something like maybe 20 minutes or so per mm -hmm. game. And uh, it's kind of surprising how low I can get both of these yeah. games like like even <laughs> if you were to cut the time that I finished both of them in half, like it would be impossible. Yeah. to finish even one of those games. Got it. So. I do want to ask you some Twitter questions. Before that, um, we've got Sent here, uh, who wants us to talk about some prizes coming up. Because this Mega Man Relay that's coming up has some incredible prizes. I'm sitting here amongst the bevy of stuff that we just have ready for you guys to win. Uh, I want to show some of that off for you. And uh, Sent is here to do that. Hey, Balecki. Hi. How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty well. It's time for prizes. Let's, I like let's it. Let's hear it. So uh, yeah, we, we definitely have some really cool stuff going on here. Uh, first off, from Jace Thor, we have this lovely illustration of Proto Man, or you know, as he's more commonly known in Japan, Blues, done in, in this beautiful hue of blues. This is actually a marker on like poster board. It's it's amazing the uh, the level of detail and shading uh, she managed to get into this. Uh, definitely, definitely love it. That's going to be a twenty five dollar donation from now until the end of the relay. Also from JSTOR, we have this lovely Mega Man Item 2 figurine. Uh, I mean, this thing is just it's super detailed, like you can see, all the way around. It's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm afraid to touch it a little, because I just I don't want anything to happen. But it's, oh, I, I love this thing. Uh, it's even got the little Item 2 on the, uh, the underside there. Just slide this over to you, Blackie. And that is, uh, I believe, a $30 donation from now until the end of the Mega Man Relay. Um, now, you, you guys saw Fireman and Iceman on the table earlier, but of course, we also have Gutman, Cutman, and Bombman all here as well. Um, all six of these are actually together as a single prize. You can win all six of these prints. Again, they're sent to us by the incredibly talented Jace Thor. I believe they're a $35 donation until the end of the, uh, the relay as, as Blecky just hides me behind this, uh, this wall of bosses. <laughs> Thank you, Blecky. There's also an Elec Man here. We, we left him out. Nobody likes Elec Man, frankly. <laughs> worst boss. Good theme, worst boss. Now, uh, we, have something, we have something else here to show you guys off, but you know what? It's, it's actually something so important, I don't want to touch it with my bare hands, so I'm, I'm going to put on some gloves real quick. This is going better than it did in practice. Oh, yeah, yeah. In practice, I put the gloves on backwards. It was, it was a nightmare. Don't ever give me gloves. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of its protective cellophane here. We have an original... Animation cell from Mega Man 8. This is That's nuts. Yeah. This is certified to be one of the original animation cells, oh along God. with I believe there's a, almost like a little concept sketch on the back of it. It's it's kind of hard to see. It's a little faint uh, through the uh, the backing, but um, yeah, this is one of the original animation that looks cells from Mega Man 8. It's it's crazy. It, you might be wondering why there, it's actually kind of very clear in a lot of spots, and I didn't I didn't realize this either. I had to ask the donor, like, hey, what's what's up with that? It seems almost unfinished. Well, apparently they didn't actually add yellow paint. What they did was they had the game as a yellow background and just added things on top of that for the uh, the cutscenes. So that, that's just a, wow. a really cool animation technique. Um, guys, this is, this is absolutely a piece of history. It's one of a kind. It's a $30 minimum donation between now and the end of the relay race. It was donated to us by uh, Zero Chen. Uh, thank you so much for that. That's, that's absolutely incredible. Um, now, guys, speaking of pieces of video gaming history, we have a, we have a bit of another one here. So our next prize is uh, something a little special. We have for you an Atari 2600. But it's not just an Atari 2600, because mm -hmm. we also have a copy of Dragster. But wait, 
It's not just any copy of Dragster. This is Darbian's copy of Dragster, the copy of Dragster to record the first recorded 557. And you know what? We're going to take it a step further because Darbian is going to come out here and sign this copy live on stream. Darbian, come on, come on. There, there you have it, folks. There you have it. Beautiful penmanship. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Darby. And now, how much do you think you'd have to donate to win that, Blackie? Ten dollars? I mean, with the si before I was just gonna say yeah. like five bucks. With the signature, that's like two hundred now. No, no. You know, you know how much you need to donate to get in to win this, Blackie? Five dollars. What? Fifty-seven cents. <laughs> five fifty-seven. Oh. <laughs> Get those donations in, guys. Uh, last we checked, uh, that punch out run that we really want to see Zeller do is about, um, I think it's about $10,000 away from the goal. So get those donations in. Definitely send those donations towards that. And, uh, you know, Blackie, I'm going to let you guys get back to the wonderful interview you're having. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sen. These prizes, honestly, this is probably the best block of prizes. Metroid was really solid. This Mega Man relay and its prizes might just kind of take that. Uh, take that title. Um, so awesome. Thank you for these awesome prizes. We need your help to get, uh, to get this interview in. So it looks like we're right around 9K left. So we need your help getting this in. This is awesome. Uh, I've never seen anything like this before. So let's do it. Let's do it. Um, we have a few Twitter questions actually coming in from you guys. Um, so let's get to those for Zallard. So Eldrinique asks you, Zallard, which of the two games, so you're going to be playing them at the same time, which of the two games are you more nervous about? Probably definitely Mike Tyson's punch out. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Tyson. Tyson, OK. OK. Got it. Um, next up by C Poles M, we have, will we see a three games, one controller run of um, Mike Tyson's punch out, super punch out, and then punch out for the Wii from you ever? Um, so there's a couple of issues with that. One is the, the length of that game is so much longer than Mike Tyson's uh -huh. punch out and super punch out. Although, if I were to do the first loop, then, you know, that kind of falls in that range. Yeah. But then there's the question of the technology required, because... Just for this run, it's kind of hard to get it to work correctly. Um, but I don't know. I couldn't imagine what it would take for uh, to you know add we in the mix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big, that's a big ask right there. Big ask. Well, thank you so much, Zalard, for this interview. I hope that it gets met. We're only 9K away. We need your help to make it happen. So keep on watching this Mega Man Relay. Donate for this awesome amount of prizes, including an autographed dragster cart. So let's do it. Thank you, guys. Donate. Here we go for probably the best, what, in my opinion, maybe the best uh, race of the marathon. Let's see it. Thank you so much, Blecky, for the amazing interview with Zallard. I'm Edo Bean, and I'm going to be here uh, during the Mega Man 123 Relay race, which we are getting set up right now. But you know what? I got a couple of donations uh, to read through for you guys. We are getting closer and closer to that punch out bonus game. Right now, it's supposed to be $75,000. We're at $70,292. We are so close, guys. Let's make this happen. I have a $200 donation from Griffey Poo that says, Mama said, knock you out. I'm going to knock you out. So thank you for that donation. Really appreciate it. We have a $10 donation from Sadfer that says, this donation goes towards my beautiful mom, Kate, who's currently battling through cancer. Stay strong, mom. We can punch out this last remaining bit. $10 from Elizabeth that says, how can you play two games with one controller? Donating so we can all find out. $20 from Boing, oh wow, Boing Z. Oh, I so butchered that up, I apologize. Says, I love when Pokemon games are run at AGDQ. Thanks a lot, you guys are awesome for what you do. $30 from Neon Nimbus that says, I always cannot wait when GDGO rolls around. I love what you all do and watching everyone destroy the games I've played. Here's to that punch out run.
We have a $20 donation from Coconut that says, let's punch out cancer in the gut. Case 1111 donates $5.57 with a blank message, but we all know why you did that, so thank you for that donation. Santiago167 also donates $5.57 saying, gotta have me that Atari 2600. Darby and Sick, yes please. $5.57 from Hutch the Clutch that says blessed by the legendary Darbian and pushing Punch out closer to fulfillment can't resist a donation. Al the Dentist 211 donates $35 saying, give me the Punch out. $10 from Varen that says, Mike Tyson. $10 from Anonymous that says, punch out cancer. One person playing two games at once bends the mind. Let's make it happen. $50 from Anonymous that says, this run needs to be seen. Zalad is just too strong. Let's get those donations in, people. We have a $20 donation from Otaku Taylor that says, if Matt can fight two people at once, can Doc pedal two bikes at the same time too? Phoenix True Fire donates $25 saying, appreciate the support. Here is the other $25 as promised. Good luck on the rest of the runs, guys, and let's be cancer together. Paul163 donates $15 saying, come one and come all. Let's get that one million hype tonight. All in on Punch Out. $20 from Raiden Fallen that says, have, to, have got to donate during one of my favorite game series. Pokemon speedruns always amaze me, whether they are as crazy glitchy as the first generation games or as well thought out as this game. Great job on the run so far, Trev. I got another anonymous $5.57 donation of blank. Thank you so much. We are getting closer and closer to that incentive, guys. Keep it going. We got another $5.57 donation from anonymous with a blank message, but we all know where it's going to. Robot Leader donates $5.57 saying, can't wait to see Tyson. $5.57 from some newbie saying, first time donating, love the show every year. Loda Pecker donates $5.57 saying, $5.57 to enter for that sweet Atari. We got another anonymous $5.57 donation with a blank message and a $5.57 donation from Danger Tater. All blank messages, but we know why you're donating for, so keep them coming. And with that, we have met our incentive. We are going to be seeing Punch Out. Thank you guys so much for making this happen. We have a $6 donation from Asian Turtles that says, signed copy of Dragsters from the Darbian. <laughs> Came to donate quicker than 5.57 seconds. We have a $10 donation from Anonymous that says, watch out for Tyson. He's the original one punch man. I got that joke. <laughs> $150 donation from Ellis that says, punch out or ruckus. Andy J Retro donates five dollars and fifty-seven cents. That says I have an Atari 70, 7800 and a copy of Dragster, but having Darvian's actual cart would be pretty legit. Let's get some punch out.
So because we have made our incentment for the punch out, there will be a new one coming up. It will be our next set of block after Baldur's Gate 2. It will be Dark Souls 3, any percent, no teardrop run by Save TV. And that is 75,000. So if you want to see Dark Souls 3, of course, because obviously a new upcoming remaster game is coming we, for the first one, you got to go do start donating now, guys, if you want to see that happen. Once again, it will be after Baldur's Gate 2. So we got to get them in. It's 75,000. We have a $5.57 uh, cent donation from Anna Artemis that says, let's see this punch out run. $30 from Anonymous that says, two games and one controller. No idea how that works out. Let's find out. $5.57 donation from Anonymous that says, first time watching live, but I must have watched almost everyone with AGDQ and SGDQ. So glad I can watch this Mega Man race. So pumped. It's not much, but my $5.50 is going towards Punch Out and the Super Punch Out. Got a $60 donation from uh, Nature that says, donating for Punch-Out during a Mega Man race. Don't you think you can hit my nostalgia spot any harder? I know Kirby isn't up just yet, but can I hear a Poyo already? Highlight of the week. Oh, my goodness. All right. Poyo! There you go. <laughs> you guys will love it way too much. <laughs> We have a $5.57 donation from Anonymous that says, shout outs to running cancer into the ground. $30 from Anande Yanen that says, Mike Tyson and Nick Bruiser. Oh, have at it, you good sirs. Here's to the ultimate knockout. Let's deal a body blow to cancer while we're at it. Shout outs to Toho Sweden because I know a lot of you are watching. $5.57 from uh, Prontera64 that says, let's go punch out. Mega Man X381 donates $100 saying, greetings from the stream room. Longtime fan, so excited to be here to see this relay. Good luck to all the runners. $50 from Anonymous that says, I was supposed to go to ha have a nice dinner tonight, but due to the snowfall, it was canceled. Here's my money I'm saving by staying in and watching AGDQ. You can still have a nice dinner with us. We have a $5.57 donation from Anonymous that says, Darbian rules. $30 from Anonymous that says, this event is great and Punch Out is a decent game. So let's see boxing. We have a $260 donation from Kragnosaurus Rex that says, it was my birthday this month, so here's $10 for every day I've been alive. So hyped for this Mega Man Relay race. Also, rar. Oh, rar are you back. Also, happy birthday. The Faithless One donates $250, saying, I tried to get my donation in for the punch-out incentive, but it has already been met. Put this towards Dark Souls 3. More game equals more time to raise money for such a good cause. So we're going to throw it out to our commentators, Sinister, Chelney, and Duckfist. Take it away.
What's up, AGDQ 2018? <laughs> you guys excited for this relay race? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They seem excited. Well, they seem pretty excited. So I'm Sinister One. I'm joined here by Duck Fist and Chelney. We're going to be your commentators for the relay race. And we have 12 of the best Mega Man players from around the globe. We have six countries represented here. It's a very diverse group and they're top players. So let's get right into it. We want to introduce the teams. Duck Fist, would you do the honors? Sure thing. Yeah, we have four teams today. Starting off on Team Auto, we have Cool Kid playing Mega Man 1. He is the current world record holder from Sweden. And on Mega Man 2, we have Streamline from the USA. And on Mega Man 3, we have Casio from Brazil joining us. All right, next up we got Team Beat. We have Dexter, he is from Sweden. You know Dexter. You, you, you've seen him race this game a few times before, I'm sure. Uh, but somebody you haven't seen before is Shoka from Japan who will be playing Mega Man 2. He's, he is a former world record holder, by the way. And finally, playing Mega Man 3 for Team Beat, we have Colonel Fatso. And he is from Canada. Okay. That's right. And then we have Team Roll, starting off with Mega Man 1, White Hat from the USA. Running Mega Man 2, we have Cypher from the USA also. And then one of our few runners that came from a distance also, Prissy running uh, Mega Man 3 from Germany. Oh, and uh, to finish us off, we have Team Rush. Starting us off uh, on Mega Man 1 is ND Sui from Sweden. And on Mega Man 2, we have Zoraki0427 from Japan. And wrapping it up on Mega Man 3, we have Fast at CC from the USA, the current world record holder. <laughs> and uh, if, if we're ready to go, I suppose we can pass it back over to the runners and get this going. Let's do it. Let's see this race. <laughs> you have seen this race before, that is true. Uh, these, these four players did race last year. I believe uh, Dexter was the winner. Yeah, a whole nother dynamic now, though, with two more games to follow. All right, we're going to do a countdown. We're going to go from five, four, three, two, one, go! All right, starting us off in Cutman Stage in Mega Man 1. We begin with Cutman Stage because uh, not a whole lot of items can actually make the stage uh, be sped up. And also, Cutman uh, can take quite a bit of damage from the Buster, and once you get the Rolling Cutter, you can take down Electman pretty easily. Electman is really difficult with the Buster, and most importantly, on Electman Stage, we'll be getting the Magnet Beam, which is kind of the primary uh, item to use to execute all the crazy glitches and techniques in this run. Uh, coming up on this next screen here in Mega Man 1 is one of the notorious like two-tile high corner jumps. Let's see how many of our players get, get it. It looks like 
everyone that went for it got it just fine. Very nice. Moving through the rest of Cutman stage here. Really good execution so far. So another trick you're going to see these players doing is they're going to be using select to kind of uh, shorten the damage animation there and get through enemies a lot quicker. You'll notice that throughout the run. They can also use select on the bosses, but that won't happen until a little bit later. Yeah, the select button is a, a magical thing in this game. It's uh, pretty unique in the entire Mega Man series. It's used to execute quite a few things, and you need some uh, dexterous fingers to be constantly reaching for the select button there. All these players doing a great job so far. Timing for it is always different between bosses, so uh, the runners have to be uh, very aware of which boss they're fighting uh, and know the timings for each one. So here's a, an interesting tiny little glitch there. You see them grabbing the ladder on the bottom of the screen from the top of the screen. Uh, just, a, just a small sample of uh, a few uh, interesting things to come here. And this, uh, this, this big eye is kind of annoying, uh, doing 10 damage on contact, and it's pretty much a 50-50 shot to whether or not you run into him. But Cutman fight is quite easy. I don't think any of our runners will have uh, too much issue here. So yeah, you're not going to see too much difference here in this, in this first stage. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but once we start getting into the later stages, you're going to probably see a little bit of separation uh, from our runners. But as Duckfist mentioned, this is a scripted fight, so these guys shouldn't have too much problem with Cutman at all. And it looks like everybody is uh, taking him down pretty easily. All right, that man down. Nice job. And we have a pretty tight spread here, everyone entering elect stage. And this stage is completely different from Cutman stage. It's sort of vertically oriented, and it's much more difficult, even in casual play and speed running across the board. Even this first room is extremely challenging to get out of if, you, if, if you've ever played this game. Uh, but quite a bit of uh, select button usage to, to buffer through some of the damage that you take. Some really just dangerous jumps coming up, and most importantly, about halfway through the stage, we'll be checking out that Magnet Beam, one of the most critical sections of this run. So as you can see, this stage is very vertical. Uh, these players are going to be going up quite a bit. Uh, there's going to be a tight corner jump that's coming up, and if it is missed by any of our players, they're going to lose 12 seconds or so. So they're going to have to be pretty careful. Okay, and here's this, Here uh, the next corner jump. Oh, it's got it. A couple of retries, nobody's falling yeah. yet. Everybody's right. up All there. Right. All right. Everybody's through. All right, that's what we want to see. Yeah, in a race, it's, uh, this is, those times the jumps are always really scary, so nice to see them all just nail it. And we're coming up pretty quick to the magnet beam early grab. So normally you need to get you need to have the super arm, which you get from Gutsman, to grab and move these blocks. But Mega Man's ladders are, are kind of strange by kind of shooting and grabbing a ladder at the same time. You can zip out of bounds, and the runners have to be extremely careful here to grab this and not get stuck inside. Okay. Oh, 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 careful. Yes! Everybody, yeah, everybody is through. Is no through. stop blocks. All right. As many of you know, you can get stuck there. So it's really great to see all the players getting through. And now they can start using that magnet beam to uh, send these ladders a little quicker. Uh, it's pretty slow to climb the ladder, so they're going to be making very good use of that magnet beam to get all the way up to the top and fight a luck man. Yeah, not a whole ton of uh, ability to start zipping with it yet, but we're going to see that in the very next stage. Yeah, the Magnet Beam is really the like, primary weapon that, that really distinguishes this, this run from every other Mega Man game and, and most other games in general. I mean, it just has such insane utility and with some of the glitches coming up, it can really do some amazing things. It's, it's, it's a truly unique uh, addition uh, to the speedrun. And this boss fight is pretty straightforward. They're going to fire uh, three shots here. Uh, no, no real RNG to speak of. That was a close one there for Cool, cool. Kid. <laughs> Be careful now. <laughs> yeah, we don't normally see a left man okay. get a shot. But. Andy gets that really high orb grab as well, so saving a few frames there as well. These guys have been doing a great job of keeping it close so far, but Iceman is where the difficulty ramps up. This can be a pretty scary stage. We're going to see some zips starting now. Yeah, this is a this is a really challenging stage, and from what I what I understand, talking to the runners before, a lot of them are pretty uh, afraid of this stage uh, comparatively to the rest of the stages. 
So there's a real critical section with some of the magnet beams. Uh, you really want to get some of these uh, vertical screen wraps to avoid having to jump through the really slow Yoku block sections. Another thing to note is that walking in the water is a little slower, so all of our runners are going to try and just stick the magnet beams above the water and keep above that. So here's the zip setup. The runners only have a limited amount of ammo to set this up, so it's really important that they get it or just go ahead and move on. And we get a couple of nice uh, vertical zips Next here from through. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty much everybody except for Team Rush has made it through. And this, uh, this section here crossing this uh, large gap, these these floating platform guys can be really finicky. Oof. And uh, Dexter taking a death there on the center of Iceman stage. So we, we have been told that Team Auto is winning the audience straw poll with 47% of the votes. They're looking for that automatic win. Team Auto, look out, cool kid. He's the world record holder. He's played this game quite a bit and he's had some success in GDQs, that's for sure, but still a pretty close race overall. Yeah, Dexter really fortunate, actually, with regard to how he did the zips in the first room. He had a lot of extra beam, and uh, able to go through that long section again fairly easily. And we get to see our first instance of the select uh, invulnerability cancel glitch on Robot Masters. Easily taking down a boss just with a single projectile. You see that quite a bit, the use of the select button really showing itself in the Ice Band stage. Mm. Nice. nice corridor zips there. Yeah, those corridor zips. Just if you have any spare magnet beams, you can kind of place those. Every one of those placements is pixel perfect, and these runners are just nailing them all the time. I mean, I just can't even understand that. It's, it's, it's really a next level thing. I mean, <laughs> using the magnet beam to just kind of avoid going up and down these slow ladder sections. Um, so in Fireman stage, we really, really want to watch out for the last part of the stage. There's a critical zip. Yeah, all these, all these magnet beam placements are critical here in this stage. Just a lot of, a lot of very difficult placements and a lot of zips to be done. And we can see that the team auto and uh, I believe that would be team roll are keeping it pretty close. White Hat gets that nice little uh, screen scroll again too, so uh, saving up a few more, few more frames. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of a, an optional little zip here. Okay, so here is the big Fireman stage zip coming up. This is really important that these guys get this because if, if you don't have the inputs just right, you can just fall and die because Mega Man's kind of on the bottom of the screen here. Ooh. Cool Kid is through, but unfortunately it looks like uh, Team Roll did not make it. And the difficult thing about that is mostly you just lose all the magnet beam you had acquired up to that point, and it might not be possible to attempt the zip again. All right, nice job there by Team Rush as well, getting that zip, heading into the boss. So once again, just using that uh, select trick, just have to be mindful of how many iframes each boss has. Space it out correctly. And Team Beat making it through the Fireman Zip. Team Roll progressing to the boss, while Team Rush and Team Auto are making their way uh, to the next stage, which is Bomb Man. And w uh, with that, we can probably uh, get a few donations in the first half of Bomb Man stage here. All right, we have a $30 donation from Slurpee Ninja, saying third time donator, long time speedrunner. This is a shout out to all my classic Mega Man crew. This is what I've been waiting for all week. We also have a $15 donation from Conster that says, Conster here, wish all of the classic Mega Man best of luck. This donation goes to the winning team's choice. Go Team B. All right, progressing through uh, Bomb Man stage here. It's relatively straightforward through the first half. Uh, there's a few little magnet beam zips you can kind of squeeze in at the top of the screen. Uh, notice uh, avoiding the Sniper Joe. If you don't use like the ice beam or just stay above them with magnet beams, this guy's gonna follow you all the way to the end here. And uh, the main thing to watch out in Bomb Man stage is the very last section. There is a critical zip setup here. You see on Team Auto, we want to get uh, magnet beam on a specific pixel, transition the screen vertically, and this last room can be bypassed, and it's, it's quite long, so it's a huge time save. Very nice execution by Team Auto there. Team Rush coming up. Let's see if he gets the pixel. That looks good. And wait. And we're good. In there. Trigger the transition. We're good. Beautiful. And the Bomb Man fight is relatively straightforward. Just uh, do that select buffer with the uh, fire right on top of him. Goes down nicely.
Yeah, it's, it's worth noting this, this game doesn't have very much randomness, um, but Bomb has uh, some of it there. And whether he jumps all the way across the room or a short hop, and he got a good pattern there compared to Cool Kids. So a little, little bit of time difference. You're not going to see a huge swing, I don't think, in this game based on RNG, but uh, it is a little bit of it in here. So we see on a uh, Cool Kids uh, stream as uh, both Dexter and White Hat successfully execute the Bomb Man zip. Uh, cool Kid going through Gutsman stage, so if you didn't do the early Magna Beam grab, say you were playing a some sort of a zipless category, um, you'd start with gut, Gutsman stage, but those uh, moving platforms are extremely slow. Since you have the Magna Beam in this route, allows you to go through that, and it just, it's just a part of the route that uh, makes this much faster. Um, they'll even try to kind of squeeze in some extra little zips here at the end. A cool Kid not quite having the right pixel. Let's see what uh, Team Rush has to say here. That looks good. Might get a little zip here. Nice vertical screen wrap as well. There it is. Save me a few seconds. And uh, we'll probably see some corridor zipses here as well. Pretty much the way that these zips work is you want to get the magnet beam uh, placed at a particular pixel so that Mega Man's entire sprite fits like neatly between the ceiling and that and the, and the magnet beam and the face left. You just go flying at like 16 pixels per frame. Andy right on Cool Kid's heels now. Team Otter with the grab. <laughs> oh yeah. Team Rush following up. So we're going into Wily stages and uh, there's going to be a zip right early on in the stage which is about a seven or eight second time save. So if Cool Kid were to miss this and then Endy were to get it, he could probably take the lead at this point. Still counts. Bomb, bomb is a very frustrating weapon to use. <laughs> yeah, Hyper Bomb is uh, not not the most uh, useful of uh, weapons in the, in the right. series. Looks like Cool Kid uh, didn't get the zips. Quite this getting is the Andy's zips. chance right here. Can he get it? Uh, I think he's a little nah, low. It's too loud. Nah, it's a little low. Mm -hmm. So they're both going to have to take the long way. This gives the other two teams a little bit of time to catch up. I mean, eight seconds is definitely a good chunk. Yeah, there's still plenty of uh, dangerous rooms and potential time losses, time savers coming up throughout the rest of the Wily stages. It's not an easy game, folks. Uh, this bottom screen here uh, with, the, with, with the large spike bed across the bottom and these floating platform guys, you know, Team Auto doing another vertical screen wrap by uh, grabbing the ladder, it's really scary. These green platforms, they just don't cooperate sometimes. They can move randomly. Sometimes if you're just standing on them, you'll just fall right through and take damage and land on the spikes. And Cool Kid having a little issue with the Magnet Beam climb. Very low on Magnet Beams yeah, here. This could be trouble for him. He's going to have to be pretty careful here. We can already see uh, Andy over here uh, catching up quite a bit to, to Cool Kid, not messing up those uh, Magnet Beam jumps. Yeah, Beam is really critical in hanging on. Uh, since you don't get refills throughout the run, or throughout the Wily Castles, you have to be very careful. Um, don't want to waste too many. And routing comes becomes a little bit diff different. Ooh. Oh. Cool kid getting dangerous there. Going for the uh, the streamline kill. And Andy. Ooh, ooh, Andy surviving in there one HP. Yeah, really important that uh, really important these guys don't miss a cycle because obviously then you have to wait for Yellow Devil to form on the other side of the room. So Really nice job there, saving yeah, it. So really like the most well-known application of the select flitch right there, just because Yellow Devil is such a long fight normally if you don't use it. Uh, moving into Wily 2, this is a really, this is a pretty scary stage. There's a lot of zip potential uh, that can be very scary, and our runners will not be going for the more scary ones uh, because there are some immense soft lock uh, potential in it. Also, you, if you die, you respawn pretty far back. Refighting Cutman here. Still just using the buster, there doesn't seem to be any blocks to grab uh, for Gutsman's weapon. Yeah, since you can keep bosses overlapped with uh, buster shots, no real reason to use the collect glitch. Team roll moving on to Wily 2. And uh, Andy catching up a little bit because he's not having to get those refills for Magna Beam. Dexter taking a death, going back to the beginning of Wily 2. Like, yeah, Wily 2, I 
believe there's a checkpoint near the end, but before uh, either Elect Man or Cut Man, it sends you right back to the beginning, and you have to refight those bosses. And we can't emphasize enough just how difficult these Mega Man games are, so it's completely normal to uh, see some deaths in these races. So everything is just so precise. Using a trick similar to the early magnet beam grab, uh, our runners will be jumping out of bounds here just a little bit. It's much safer than the refight skip, but uh, you can see it just bypasses those vertical screens much faster. And uh, Team Rush and Team Auto entering uh, the copy robot very close here. Now that looks like a three or four second spread between the two. Very nice. This should be interesting. So uh, the use of... Uh, he, uh, Play Man's weapon, Fire Man's weapon, uh, on Copy Robot. I think, I think every weapon does two damage against this guy, but this is just the most, it's the easiest to hit him with, and when Copy Robot attacks, he'll always attack with whatever weapon you currently have equipped. It's just the easiest way to deal with it. Just runners are going to want to be careful not to use too much ammo for, uh, wild, uh, for later on in the wild machine. Coming up to my favorite part of the run, the dupes. The dupes. Oh, yeah. It's moving into Wily 3 here. There's a really, I mean, we say this pr pretty much every zip, but it's a very critical zip. It skips like half the stage. Um, needing enough, having enough magnet beam is crucial to, to pull this off. And they can set this up with a buffer. Cool Kid electing not to do that. Cool Kid having a single magnet beam left. That should be just enough for him. Okay, and landing in, in the right there. position to buffer that last shot. That was close. He is out of magnet beam now, though. And how uh, that's. Unfortunate for the setup in Wily 4 now. He's going to have to do uh, a slightly different setup than probably most of the other runners. So looking to get these dupes here, what you need to do is uh, just do a re-grab on the last frame as the uh, block is going off the screen. And there's there's one. Going to need two oh. more. There's another one. He needs one more. Got to get this last one. Yo. There it is. Yeah. Cool kid clutching it out. Andy. Andy is on oh. Three to spare. Wow. Indy Sweet. Showing us how duping is all is done. Those are frame perfect inputs. Yeah, those are frame perfect inputs. There are seven of those uh, bubble machines, and there are only four of the blocks. Now, oh. keep, keep in mind, Andy, uh, he has enough magnet beam here, so he's not going to be losing any time, but Cool Kid is going to have to come up with something. He's gonna have to skip that first zip, it looks like. Oh no, he's gonna respawn the uh So this is Andy's chance. Good setup. Oh, nice! Okay. Very close here. Cool kid giving this last zip pixel here as well. And this is one of the this is the critical zip of the run, guys. Surprise. But the refight skip. He's got nice. it. Nice. Oh, nice. Team auto is and in there. Team it. rush is in there. And plenty of dupes for every team successfully defeating the bubble machine. But uh, so what you saw there on both Team Rush and Team Auto and coming up on Team Beat and Team Roll, looks looks like we're uh, taking a intentional game over on Team Beat. No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what we saw there, the refight skip by placing a few magnet beams and having Bomb Man throw at least two bombs. If you just mash the start button, you fly towards the top of the screen and just zip past all the bosses. So, taking down Wily Machine, not very difficult, but the runners are not going to want to take too much damage. And Team Auto is done. <laughs> Moving on to Mega Man 2 with Streamline. Team Rush right behind. Two excellent times, mid-19 minutes for both of those teams. And they're going to be moving on. Their players are switching out. And we're going to be ready for Rockman 2 here in just a moment, as soon as they get it loaded up. White Hat's our... getting some, some rough luck yeah, from Bomb, Bomb Man trolling him, but dip. all players executing the refight skip very nicely. It looks like Team Rush actually took the lead there in that transition, as a matter of fact. So the route here in Rockman 2, these guys are going to go to Flash first. They're looking to get Item 3 along with Time Stopper. That'll help them set up a zip in Heat Man, which is the next stage. And then they can get Item 1, which is that's the truly broken item in this game. Yeah, Flash Man stage doesn't really require uh, any items. It doesn't have too much potential for zips to save time. And uh, Flash is weak against Buster. Team Beat finishing up Mega Man 1. Followed by Team Roll. There it is.
still only half a stage deviation between first and fourth. I mean, that's this is still close. Oh yeah, this this is a long relay here. A lot of things could happen. So note that they're playing the Japanese version, and that means that uh, the Buster and the rest of your weapons, for that matter, only deal half as much damage as in the U.S. version. So these guys are going to have to get 14 shots in here on Flashman. This is a really cool looking fight uh, if you can pull it off just right. Yeah, this is an extremely difficult fight, highly technical, there's very little room for error. Um, the idea is to kill Flashman before he uses Time Stopper. Oh, Zaraki was one, one shot, shot off. off. And Gmon, take there it is. Flashman, so catching up street one line at a time. Coming through. Yeah, this, this splash fight is, is, when done correctly, just looks amazing. It's, it's really impressive to see them get all the hits in. So some pretty long cutscenes in this game, but basically they're, they're getting Time Stopper here, they're getting Item 3, that's the one that attaches to the wall and can go up and down. Um, that's going to allow them to get into the ceiling on Heat Man stage, and the way that that works is this game, the collision detection is really actually looking for the item uh, as opposed to Mega Man's sprite. So as long as the item isn't going into the ceiling, that's where it would despawn. Uh, Mega Man can enter the ceiling and then you can get ejected at uh, very, very fast speeds as you're going to see here shortly in Heat Man stage. Oh, oh. oh. Team beat and team roll pulling out a Flashman stage at about the same time. Shoka clutching it out. One more hit and he would have been dead there. He only has four HP. So let's see some item three throws here. Nicely done there by Zaraki. It's a very tight throw. You actually have to get pretty far off that single block before you uh, can press B and actually shoot it. So really nicely done. And here's a demonstration of our first zip by placing the item three and standing on it. Uh, while the item three is going up on the ladder, but Mega Man is underneath the ceiling, you can force yourself into the ceiling and just fly across the screen. Your team auto having a little difficult that time item, setting that up. Yeah, that item three placement is a little tricky, and then it's a it's streamline a, does get the zip. Four frame window, so the so Rocky dealing with these Yoku blocks. He's, he's uh, making sure he doesn't fall in the pit there, and he's going to have to take on Heat Man. Now it'll be interesting to see what he elects to do here. He can either take damage from this enemy, which it looks like he's going to, or you may see some of our players using the. The time stopper to avoid taking that damage because Heat Man deals quite a bit of damage, and most of these guys are going to be doing a pretty aggressive strat where they stand near Heat Man to minimize the time in between his attacks. He can delay for a half second, a full second, or a second and a half, and they're going to kind of do these little buffer jumps and make sure that they land right next to him. Uh, Zaraki looks like he's going to take it safe, though, actually. I don't blame him at all. Let's see if Streamline is going to take the same approach. Once again, a huge factor of RNG in this boss fight. Uh, Heat Man can dash after 30, 60, or 90 frames, so half to a one and a half second time frame. All right, so Streamline did take a hit, so he is going to take it safe from here on out, which is a wise move. One more hit, and he would be down. And Zoraki is through. Team Auto is through as well. And yeah, the Heat Man fight is, it is pretty difficult. It takes 14 shots with the Buster to kill him. And yeah, Bubble Lead does do more damage, but we really, really want the item one. Uh, you'll see coming up after Air Man stage. But Air Man stage coming up next, this is a really difficult stage. Uh, okay, well, the item one will help us cross it a little faster, but uh, this is one of the critical moments in Mega Man 2 is crossing the Air Man stage pit with item one. It's pretty scary. It's pretty scary to do in a marathon run, and there's a couple different ways you can do it. I, I believe that our players will most likely be electing to take damage, which is a little safer than trying to do these kind of corner jumps, which are very, very dangerous. So first up, Zaraki's going to go ahead and use the, the time stopper. Okay. Team roll and Team B finishing Heat Man stage within about a second of each other. All right, here we go. Oh, he's going for the corner jumps. Looks like Zoraki. Zoraki is through. Zoraki Beautiful. feeling pretty confident there and some great execution. And he is through the danger zone right now. Team Auto made it as well. 
So the Airman fight itself is actually pretty difficult because he's got five different patterns uh, that he can do. Some of them are favorable, some of them are not. And it, once again, you're stuck with the Buster, so you got to get 14 shots. And if you can really kind of weave your shots in between his tornadoes, then you can kill him pretty quickly. But if not, then uh, it can take a little longer. One of my favorite little tricks in uh, Airman stage there by just briefly turning to the left as that uh, as that PP spawns. That's the name of the bird. It'll spawn from the left side, making the rest of that screen much easier. And here we got Team Roll, Team Beat making it across the dangerous uh, item one jump section. Getting the corner nice. jumps. Team Roll is through. Team Beat is through. Everyone made it through. Airman Everybody stage. made no it. Wow. <laughs> That's really good news. So Zaraki getting a good pattern here. He's able to take some intentional damage both times, and he should get a pretty quick kill on Airman. Airman. And he does. Didn't even move. Nice pattern for Team Auto as well, taking that intentional damage. Oh, missed that last tornado. And they're going to have a little bit of a slower fight. Now keep in mind that uh, Cypher is kind of, he's kind of creeping up on these guys. He started out a little far behind, but he can kind of slowly make up time. Uh, he's definitely a very strong player in this game, and he has also made it through Airman here. These other players have managed to pick up item two, and they will be headed to Clashman stage. So uh, Duckfist, do you, you think anybody's going to be doing anything special here? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Clash is a notorious stage in this game. It has a pretty much the most difficult trick uh, in this first screen, and it is possible to zip out of bounds. I'm not sure if any of our runners are going to go for it. Indeed, Team Rush is going for it. Oh, he's not. Okay. No. Nope, Next he's, screen. He's Second declining. screen zip. Second screen zip. By zipping out of bounds here. Streamline. No. <laughs> okay. It looked like he wanted it. By zipping out of bounds here, actually, Team Rush is about five screens ahead of the current visual position. Uh, Team Auto having a little difficulty setting yeah, up that Yeah, in a little bit of trouble there. He's gonna have to reset that screen so he can get back up there. It's pretty easy to bonk your head uh, when you're trying to set up that second screen zip, but he is through the zip this time. Uh, Zaraki advancing nicely through the stage as well. So what's happening is uh, both after this zip, uh, the players are walking out of bounds past the checkpoint and then dropping down a ladder. And on that screen, it's actually considered a suicide underneath that screen. And since you're past the checkpoint, you respawn at the checkpoint, it's much faster than climbing through all of the uh, slow moving platform screens. And uh, here on Cypher and Shoka's screens, we'll see them attempt the Clashman zip as well. Item three placements on the ladder are very, very precise, actually. Um, if you place them at uh, wrong sections on the ladder, they won't appear underneath you, so they have to aim as they go up the ladder and make sure that they're gonna actually land on it uh, by firing it in the correct position. And a lot of item one being used there to set up that zip for team B. Uh-oh. Luckily, you have plenty of item one, but he's gonna have to take a much slower path in the second half of the stage. So we're coming up to Clashman here, Zaraki. We finally have the boss weaknesses. No need to use Buster anymore. So depending on which pattern he gets, he may only need to fire two tornadoes. And there it is, good pattern, yes. good execution. Yeah, it's exactly what we wanna see is that sort of delayed jump almost. So Streamline is up next. Let's see what kind of pattern he gets. Good pattern as well. Very nice. All right, so we are entering a very, very scary stage. Uh, there is potential for soft block in this stage. There's going to be a couple zips that are set up. Uh, Zaraki wisely choosing to get the one up there. This game is very, very dangerous, and you are taking two intentional deaths. Uh, so it's better to just kind of have that buffer life. But he's going to set up a, a first zip here, and we're going to have to see whether he elects to keep the lights on or to turn them off. I know that some of our players are, have a different feeling about what they want to do here. So Zaraki, let's see what he does. Lights Keeping out. him off. So yeah, you can actually do this entire uh, quick man beam section here without seeing where the platforms are. Don't worry, these guys have practiced this quite a bit. Um, yeah. It is just slightly faster. You can turn the lights on, but you do have to slow down to do it. Uh, Team Auto getting a really nice setup uh, there. Streamline doing the zip halfway through stage. Actually, the three item ones to get into the ceiling. It's really difficult. It's much different than the other zips. Just 
take some practice so I'm glad both of those runners made it no problem. So you can see Streamline did elect to keep the lights on. Uh, it, it, it does help toward the end of this stage, whereas Zaraki is now, he's setting up the final zip. It looks like he's in a good position, he just has to not zip past the door, uh, because that will cause a soft lock. So he's got pretty far to go, he's kind of got to wiggle his way over and he needs to not go past the Okay, he's good. the transition. Soft lock avoided. And then he's got a really tough fight here. He's got to land seven shots against Quick Man. He's super random. He gets a bad pattern there. Uh, he should be okay, though. Yes. He's good. Streamline zipping past Ooh. this edge of the screen, having to reset. He'll input the password for having defeated all through Clash Man and restart Quick Man stage. And that is unfortunate. That is going to be a big, uh, big time loss. That's about a minute and a half. Uh, so you can see these other players are actually going to be catching up. And Cypher had made up some time there, but he missed that last zip in that final section. So heading into Woodman, uh, Zaraki with a pretty solid lead here, but this stage can be scary as well. Uh, he's going to have another choice to make. Is he going to go for the dog scrolls, which are incredibly difficult and can cause a big time loss if you don't do them well, or is he going to break out the time stopper again? He's going dog scrolls. Let's Ooh. go. Yeah, it's really important. Um, sort of what happened there in quick with overzipping. It's really important. You don't want to overzip really anywhere, typically. And, and the, important, uh, the important thing is to trigger these screen transitions very carefully. Yes. Um, you have a very small window to actually do this. Nice. So Zaraki is through. He probably he makes a little bit of time. It is just a couple of seconds faster than using the time stopper in that. And from here on out, it gets a little strange. The rest of the stage is played out of bounds with a bunch of clever zip setups. Um, it looks scary, but trust me, they have it under control. Uh, but essentially, they're walking through the rest of the stage, advancing the room number until they pass the boss checkpoint room. And what's nice, by kind of leaving certain screens out of bounds, you don't have to deal with the enemies that would normally be in those screens. So he's going to reset his position there. Looks like, okay, he's looks good, good now. He's looks good, good. Now. And another that intentional death right. lands him in the boss corridor. <laughs> All right, and Streamline does get through this time, so he is through Quick Man. And Cypher electing for the Time Stopper strat to pass through all of the uh, wolves there. Yeah, Cypher is really uh, taking some very, very consistent strats. That's his approach for this relay. And Zaraki taking down uh, Woodman with the Air Shooter, a less, uh, less well-known uh, weakness. Most people would think Atomic Fire, but on Rockman 2 or on Mega Man 2 difficult mode, it does take two fully charged Atomic Fire to kill him. Much easier to use Air Shooter. And heading into Metal Man, this is a pretty straightforward stage. They're going to set up a fairly long zip at the beginning of the stage, so this would probably be a good time for some donations. Edo Bean. All right. Actually, you guys are going to be hyped again because we had an anonymous $10,000 donation. <laughs> Saying, I have to donate to my favorite game series, Mega Man and Punch-Out. And donation goes towards the uh, Punch-On setup, but I'll put another $5,000 if Cool Kid goes for the Wily 2 skips. Great cause and great people. <laughs> We have a $50 donation from Dirks McGregor that says, The misses and our two kids are excited to watch this awesome Mega Man Relay. Go Fasta! We have a $50 donation from Ken McDowell that says, Mega Man Relay Race and Zaller playing two Punch-Out games at once? Yes, please. And then Barty Studa donates $30 saying, Keep up the excellent event. This Mega Man Relay is true hype! <laughs> Alright, take it away. All right, so with Metal Man, uh, they want to kind of just keep him trapped on the right side of the screen, and they're going to do that by not advancing past the halfway point. Uh, unfortunately, Zoraki went a little too far, and that's when Metal Man starts doing his jumping pattern. Uh, let's see how it goes for Streamline, if he can manage to keep him there. Yeah, he's got him locked down. Uh, to note, Streamline does do a different route, so he didn't just catch up an entire stage. He's still got to do uh, wood after this. It's kind of a pick em whether you want to do uh, wood or metal in this particular route. Yeah, metal is a really straightforward stage. These zips are really fun, and we are using uh, item two to cross the end of the end of the stage. There, pretty much, we got all three items at the beginning of the route, and using item two as much as we can, just because it moves a little faster than Mega Man's running speed. Uh, here we are riding item two across the first screen of Bubble Man. Um, Bubble Man is a final Robot Master stage here. Uh, gonna have to deal with a lot of uh, water physics coming up. Um, 
The runners are taking a slightly safer variation of this stage just to make it more consistent. Yeah, they're going to be setting up uh, the item 1 zip here, but that item 2 zip at the end of the stage, it doesn't save a whole lot of time. Uh, looks really cool, but honestly, this is the main zip that you need to go for, and looks like Zaraki is in a good position to get it. And there it is. He's got it. He A-triggers there. You can B-trigger it, but if you if you B-trigger it too early, you run into the spikes, so you, you got to be careful. Now, Bubble Man himself has uh, three different patterns. He can give you the one bubble, the two bubble, or the three bubble. Uh, the more bubbles you get on screen, the more lag there is, so you got to kind of just hope for that one bubble pattern. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens for Zaraki. Cypher is uh, making, he's, he's making his way back into this thing, man. Ooh, he does miss that A trigger zip, though. Commentator's curse. Sorry, Cypher. And Stream bubble line. pattern. Streamline successfully doing the uh, wood zip as well. Bubble Man down. Eight Robot, eight robot Masters down for uh, Team Rush. Yeah. All right, so this is where the game gets really scary. These Wily stages are not easy. Yeah, we're going to be seeing, um, again, just like the last game and the next game, item management is going to become very important for the zips. We don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that we don't run out. Um, so setting everything up and not wasting uh, items is going to be really important. Yeah, the item one usage is especially critical just because of its zip potential. And since your weapon energy does persist throughout the Wileys, uh, the players are really going to want to maximize the use of item one and make sure that they don't accidentally waste any. Team roll with this three <laughs> three bubble pattern, but making it out of the rubble rubble master stages. Shoka right. just behind them. So Moving into Wily One. Zaraki is gonna try to despawn the egg from that bird, but keep the bird on screen because he's gonna despawn one of these uh, toothpaste enemies up here and allow him to pass through this section without getting hit. And then he's gonna have to set up the first of two vertical zips in this stage. The setup's kind of tricky. It takes three item ones to get yourself in the ceiling correctly. This is a really scary section of the run. Yeah, I think it's just barely properly. good. He should be okay. Yeah, good. I want to make sure we don't accidentally zip out of bounds here. Looks like good placement. And coming up to, I call them the nightmare jumps, you can pretty much only cross this section with item ones. Uh, but it takes so many item ones to get up here, if you fall, you lose them. Good, but he doesn't like. Oh, he's, he's on, on position. The, the alternate. Getting the vertical <laughs> the alternate zip. Track. He's through. <laughs> Team rush. You know, Zaraki. Zaraki is just really at very consistent play uh, throughout this run. It's been impressive. All runners finished. Cypher setting up another fast vertical zip here. Didn't quite hit. <laughs> Got out of there successfully. Oh, 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 dragon. That is a huge death. He is going to get sent way far back. He's going to have to pick up some extra item one. And just like that, and Team and Roll takes the lead. Cypher, slow and steady, man. He's using those consistent strats. Hopefully, uh, he doesn't kiss the dragon. Yeah, the dragon takes 28 shots with the quick boomerang to defeat. And if you touch the dragon, it is an instant kill. And there is enough stuff going on the screen that it causes a little bit of lag and you get knocked back further if you get hit. So you pretty much cannot get hit uh, while busting out those 28 shots to defeat the dragon. And looks like Cypher's in good shape here. He's mashing him down. Beautiful. Dragon down. So I asked Cypher before the relay, are you going to revert to those really risky strats if your team's way behind? He's like, nope, I'm sticking with the consistent stuff. And it's really paid off for him here. As you can say, see, he is in the lead at this point going into Wiley 2. Streamline on Team Auto with an extremely fast vertical zip setup. <laughs> Finding oh, no. inside the ceiling. Unfortunately, going to have to take a death and restart Wiley 1. But uh, Streamline is going to have to... Streamline's gonna have to take an intentional death. Cypher, meanwhile, setting up uh, this zip here. Is he gonna A trigger or B trigger this? Ooh. Oh, he A triggered it and it didn't work, so he's he's gonna take a death there, but he's 
still okay because he did get a one up. Cypher's gonna have to probably grab he an extra weapon energy. Did, I think he as well. already grabbed the weapon energy, so he should be good here. Uh, so the difference between A triggering and B triggering these zips, if you A trigger it, you have a four frame window, which is fairly generous, but the, the B trigger is like a 15 frame window. Uh, so you'll never see anybody miss that. And our race just got a lot closer. Okay, team Roll and Team Rush successfully executing the vertical zip. Team Beat in good position. Makes Very it as nice. well. Yeah, since we used our item two on the first stage, we're all out and, well, you can actually use the item one to zip past that long spike section. And Cypher with a really nice hallway there, avoiding all the drops. And we want to avoid getting bonked by the moles as well as trying to hope you get lucky and not get a whole bunch of drops in your way. So Cypher will be the first one coming to the boss, Pico Pico Coon. There's not any randomness to this boss. It's a kind of a streamlined pattern. Taking out the track. And since all three of our runners are kind of getting to this slightly slow section, Wily 3 is uh, not, not the most interesting stage. I think we're going to kick it back over to Edo Bean for some donations. All right, we have a $5,000 donation from the Yeti. Saying, donating for this amazing Mega Man race. Shout outs to all the teams. Great job. We also have a $300 donation from Mr. X. I'm not sure why everyone is so angry at this wily fellow. He seems completely trustworthy to me. Put this towards last team's uh, choice. We also have a uh, $30 donation of, from Lightning, saying, glad to see the most hype event of the marathon. Good luck to all the runners. The classic mega community is one of the best out there. If you like what you see, get yourself speedrunning classic mega. All right, you guys can go ahead and take it away. All right, so Wily 3, not a whole lot going on here. Uh, this is kind of the calm before the storm. Wily 4 is without question the most dangerous stage in this game so it's nice to kind of have a little respite you know get yourself prepared get yourself ready here you're just kind of avoiding the spikes uh, and these guys will hopefully be getting as few jumps as possible when they go up against the the guts tank yeah it'll take 14 shots to defeat uh, the guts tank and <clears throat> its hitbox is really high up uh, at the top of its head and it's Ooh. Ooh. oh no a slight death and that is a over. game over. The one, the one small silver lining there is you do get all your ammo back, so there's not going to be any ammo issues in the stages going forward for Team Rush. All right, so guts tank. How many jumps are we going to do here? Let's see if let's see if we can get the uh, the three jump. Nice. nice three jump from Cipher. Yeah, three jump, pretty. Pretty uh, standard what most people want to get in uh, in this fight. Two is possible, but very difficult. So three is what we're typically looking for. All right, Wily 4, this is it. Purple Hell, they call it. And for good reason. There's so much going on in this stage. There's a lot of zips. There's some item three drops. You got to crash the door. The boss fight's crazy. It's all going down. So let's see. Cypher's up first. He's going to try to get this little uh, Met zip here. Gets it. Nice item three drop. Another item three drop. Can he get the final one? Yeah, he's in good shape. This is kind of like a uh, revisiting Clash Man stage again with all these item three jumps. A little vertical zip here to skip this uh, this uh, spike section with the false floor, executing it very nicely. Wily three down for Team Rush. And nice hallway zip there by Cypher. So now there's these spike rooms. You got to be careful. It's, I've seen players get a little too aggressive in them sometimes, but. Cypher looks to be okay there. And meanwhile, we have Team Beat now, uh, not too far behind. Cypher's through the second room, so he's gonna take some intentional damage here and use his iframes so he can get through this room pretty quickly. And he's good, he's good. Attention to Shoka's screen. And Shoka doing the Shoka dance. Shoka Shoka. Final zip here by Cypher. You cannot overzip this door. And he's in. All right, nice exit. 
Now he's going to try to set up what's uh, called a damage transfer. So he's going to take damage on a very specific spot. And that's going to set up some memory values that allow him to just run right into this uh, view beam over here and just take it out. And so he's done with that the boss perfect. fight. That was excellent. Very nice. Yeah, just the combination of like properly setting up the zip to get into the boss room, exiting the zip, setting up the damage transfer, it's all extremely precise. A lot of a lot of tricky stuff just packed together. And okay. here we have Team Beat moving into the boss room as well. Looks like a good entry. Good entry. Pay attention to Cypher. He's gonna take a different route in the refights than everybody else. He's gonna fight Airman first, and if he gets a really good pattern, he can get a one cycle airman, which is crazy impressive. He did not get it, unfortunately, so we'll have to fight him kind of the normalish way there. Nice recovery, though. Two round is great. And Team Beat is through Wily 4 onto refights, and Team Rush right behind. So not the best luck from Heat Man there for Cypher, but he's okay. He's going to go ahead and take that health here. So with him, he's got to take some of the damage fights later on, like Quick Man can usually do a lot of damage to you, and sometimes Wood Man if you don't get a great fight. Zoraki not quite getting that double with the Crash Bomb, which means that um, he's going for the backup, he, and he, he gets does have a nice backup. So he does have one Crash Bomb. That's really important. You do need the Crash Bombs for the Wily Machine at the end of refights. If you're out of crash, crash Bombs, that really slows the fight down, but ideally you have two and you can make a super fast fight. Streamline on Team Auto also with a great uh, Wily 4 zip there and entering the boss room. Cypher having pretty decent refights here. He's got enough health. Really nice bubble. Excellent bubble refight. Alright, and then there's the old high metal, by metal. Alright, Flashman is also a piece of cake. And moving into a Wily machine here, uh, Cypher did manage to get out of Wily 4 with both of his crash bombs, and on difficult mode, this is the ideal way to defeat the boss. Gonna throw in a few metal blades, switch to clash, and it's kind of a precise shot. Gets the first one. Looks good. Nice job. Machine down. Yeah, you don't you don't actually want to hit Machine's hitbox with that. You want to hit just below it so that the explosions deal all the damage as Machine sort of floats back into it. So really nicely done. One final zip here for Cypher. He's just got to get it lined up in the ceiling. But this is another one of those situations where you cannot over-zip the door. So he's got to be careful. Looks good. And he's Excellent. in. Excellent wiggles to the door. All right, Cypher's got to close this out, though. Do not hug the alien, no matter what you do. That thing will take, like, 80% of your health. He's got to get in quite a few shots here. He's off to a pretty good start. He's got some furious mashing going on there. Nice Ooh, kill. Yo. Team roll, moving on to Mega Man 3. And team roll, Prizzy is going to be Ooh. coming through. Shoka got in trouble there a little bit. His crash bomb was a little low and unfortunately uh, didn't have the health, so he's going to have to now go into this fight again with no crash bombs. Yeah, Wily Machine and its projectiles do a lot of damage. And the second form is almost impossible to dodge. Yeah, here we go. Prissy's into Mega Man 3 for Team Roll. And we're going to see a very, very dangerous route. It's the fastest route in the game, top first, um, but incredibly dangerous. Yeah, this is a route that has uh, changed quite quite a few times. It's been uh, Magnet first, it's been Gemini first, it's been Top first. And coincidentally enough, uh, Top first was the original route, or one of the yeah. earliest routes. Yeah, we've, we've come full circle here. Yeah, we have full circle, yeah, for sure. So these cats have 10 HP. Um, it's really important that they can try to get as many of the shots at the peak of their jump, because he's pretty high up there. You'll want to pay attention to uh, Prizzy's mashing. It's, it's maybe a little bit off camera there, but he actually mashes with his teeth, believe it or not. And it works. <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to kill these cats in about three jumps if possible. Um, 
Uh, they, like I said, they have a lot of health, so it's, it's a little bit difficult. And something to note, the other three teams are all really close, all yeah. of them getting the Wily 6 zip perfectly, entering the alien fight just within about 10 or 15 seconds of each other. While uh, Team Roll here uh, with Prissy finishing up uh, top man stage. So to note, Fast is in and Fatso is in. And Cassio is in on christy has got to be feeling good about his lead right now, and these other three runners, though, right, uh, all right together right now. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens. This, uh, this game, like I said, this route is very dangerous, and we're going to see that here very shortly on Christie's screen uh, coming into the Shadow Man stage. Um, with, uh, with the other two routes, the reason why they were done was because you got, you got to have Magnet Missile for Shadow Man stage, and that made the last room of the stage very, very um, uh, easy, uh, taking care of the Parasus. Um, but however, with this route, you don't have that. You only have top spin, and so it's a very, very scary room because uh, as you'd make the jumps and kill the parachutes across, top spin will also knock you backward. So it makes the jumps even more scary because you have to actually jump further than you think you do. So here on the Proto Man fight, this is just one of the notorious parts about Mega Man 3. Proto Man takes 28 shots in this instance nice. to defeat and has no iframe, so you just need to mash and jump for your life. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful right wall kill there. Moving into this dark room. Um, obviously the runners have done this uh, so many times, they know where the floors are. Um, not really that scary of a room because there's no spikes or anything. However, um, this game is heavily uh, determined with, uh, to get a good time in this game, it's heavily determined by movement. Um, you notice now we have the slide. Uh, and uh, that slide, will have, uh, it, it takes about a third of a second for a slide to complete. And uh, here he proceeds into this section now I was talking about with uh, these parasites, taking it a little bit careful. He knows he's got the lead, no reason to take a death. Oh! Oh! oh scary. <laughs> Gets wow. bombed wow. there, but he's good. All right, Prizzy, Prizzy's got to be feeling pretty good getting yeah. through that room. But the slide is a huge factor in this game. Um, since you have to slide manually, obviously yourself, uh, there's a little bit of uh, human error involved with every single press. And so. Now, even dropping a single frame between every slide adds up to be a lot of time loss. So these runners want to be as fast as possible at uh, slide chaining uh, as they go through a lot of these rooms. And this is definitely anybody's race at this point. As you mentioned, the, the movement is what's key here. I mean, just being able to optimize that sliding. But I think really at this point, there's nothing broken that these guys can do anymore. I mean, there's going to be one small zip in Gemini, but overall, it's not like there's like these huge zips or anything crazy. It's like they just have to execute flat out. Yeah, you, like you mentioned, there is going to be a, a very small zip coming up. Um, but a bigger thing coming up is the uh, another sort of little visit here from Proto Man. Yeah, at the beginning of this uh, Gemini Man stage, we get to see some of the just intense movement and execution that Shoni was talking about. Mega Man 3, I feel, is characterized by a lot of these just long screens that are packed with the enemies, and several of the enemies have a lot of HP, so it's much different than Mega Man 1 and 2 and how it's kind of designed. And by sliding into this screen transition where Proto Man normally is and jumping out of the slide, you don't actually get to see that cutscene, and furthermore, the music actually doesn't change back to the stage song. Nice. Getting the nice there zip there. Probably the only zip you're going to see in this run, but it does save two seconds, so... Yeah, so now you notice there's no music, and uh, yeah, that actually saves uh, quite a bit of time because the music actually adds to the lag. Um, so by despawning it, um, yeah, we won't, uh, we won't have too many issues, especially in this last room here. Uh, this is the most notorious room of Gemini. Uh, there's a lot of little single blocks, and we want to try, obviously, to s slide on as many as possible. And something about the slide in this game is you can't jump out of it for eight frames, so about a sixth of a second. And so these single blocks are very scary because you want to land on the far left side as possible. And you see Prissy actually taking it a little bit carefully there since some of his landings were a little bit uh, scary. So really nicely done to get through that room. Yeah, great job. That's another one of those terrifying rooms. And, uh, you know, once, once you get through the first three stages of Rockman 3, you kind of get a little bit of a, of a relief, a little bit of a break. So he's got to be pretty happy with his execution so far, but uh, fast at CC, he'll, you know, he's, he's keep the pace. 
Person's got to be a little bit careful. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh. Percy was on six health there, so getting hit by a Gemini would have killed him. So very scary as he was barreling down on him. The lead increases for team roll. Yeah, now that he's out of Gemini, he's got to be breathing a sigh of relief. Um, we're heading now to uh, go get uh, Needle and Jet, uh, which are going to be very helpful in skipping like the yoke blocks in Magnet stage as well. Uh, it's, it's also a really short stage. It's, it's really sort of strange how um, short this stage really is, actually. So. They call this one Friedel. Yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> So uh, Cassio on Team Auto having to watch that little cutscene there. Now the time loss is one thing, but now the now the game's going to be a little bit laggier than it would be without the music. So we'll have to compensate that for all the uh, the really tight one tile wide slide jumps in the second half here. Yeah, because even though you can, like I said, yeah, we can jump out of a slide after eight frames, but the lag will add to that. So it might end up being, you know, 11 frames if you get three lag frames in there as well. So. And you need to memorize like specific timings for the slide jumps on yeah. every little block on that screen. Yeah. Uh, he does have a backup option here, though. Um, since they've already defeated Shadow Man, he has Rush Marine, uh, which he could also use if if he if he wants to here. And he's doing it. There it is. Faster with a beautiful, beautiful section. Yeah. Fasta crushing that room also. Just really nicely done. Again, trying to kill some of the enemies with Shadow Blade just to reduce some of that lag. Uh, again. Here we go. Jumping Rush Marine. Oh. <laughs> For the fans. For the fans. And he's through. Meanwhile, Prizzy having a really good needle fight, so he is just keeping the pace here. Fatso also in this single block room. Yeah, we didn't really mention it because we were watching. Ooh, oh! We, we were watching all these Gemini stages. We didn't really mention it, but uh, it's really important uh, since we fight Needleman with the laser. Uh, a Gemini laser is a very, very <laughs> bad weapon to miss with, and uh, thankfully Prizzy had a good fight. So yeah, after defeating a Needleman stage, which was the fourth Robot Master, you get awarded the uh, Rush Jet. And, uh, ooh. Looks like he's good. Okay. All right, okay. he's good, he's good. That room makes you hold your breath every single time. So yeah, we're into Snake. There's a lot of jet usage here in Snake now. Um, for example, you, you saw it a little bit earlier, and you're going to see it again here coming up, uh, that they can skip the mini-bosses by just flying right over top of them. Um, so Percy uh, has already done one of those. He's coming up to another. Um, meanwhile, we'll actually get to talk maybe a little bit when uh, Fast is coming up to his Needleman fight here very shortly, sort of about how laggy the Gemini laser can really be if you miss. Hopefully, we don't see any of the runners have that happen. Yeah, definitely that one and uh, Snake Man's weapon. Hmm. Both, both can get really laggy. Yeah, it's weird because Gemini's weapon is actually made up of three separate sprites, which is why it's so uh, tasking on the console. Here we go. Good fight. Best Easy. pattern, too. Nice. So checking out uh, Prissy on Team Roll here, jumping uh, multiple times kind of on Rush, you can prevent the weapon energy from reducing, allowing, allowing you to just ride Rush much further. Also, something to note, this is the first appearance of Rush Jet, or Rush in general. Uh, Rush Jet is extremely versatile in Mega Man 3, especially compared to the later Mega Man games. You have, like, free movement in all directions. Uh, it's a really great addition. Prissy getting the best pattern oh. from Snake. He gets away oh. from him a bit, okay. but... Really nice Makes job. Something we haven't mentioned yet, but a lot of these uh, boss fights, these boss fights are routed in a way to try to kill the bosses as close to the center as possible. Uh, sometimes it's not always possible, um, but we always try to. And the other thing is, just like uh, Mega Man X that you saw earlier in the week, um, once you kill the boss, you cannot move. Uh, Mega Man will just walk to get uh, the weapon get uh, animation there uh, after the fanfare ends. So you kind of have to just uh, be as close to the center as well so that um, you're limiting some of that downtime. Yeah, Mega Man 3 is in a way like the most demanding in that respect. It requires both Mega Man and defeating the boss to be done in the center of the screen. 
But here we are moving into Magnet Man stage uh, on Christie's screen. Um, starting off with another Proto Man fight. Uh, again, take a look at that that camera to see his wonderful mashing technique. Another 28 kill. shots, ladies and gentlemen. That was such a fast kill. That's yeah. very hard to do, yeah. Killing him before he turns around and faces left and starts going the other way is, is really hard to do, so really impressive he's done it again. Um, again, you're going to see... Oh, he gets the dunk! That's actually a uh, very precise... Swag. Very precise jump there and squeezes into that single tile gap. Uh, but this is the big reason, again, why uh, Top first and Gemini first have a, a, an advantage over Magnet first. Uh, you get Jet for this room, and you don't have to play any of these Yoku puzzles. You just fly right over Top. Uh, it is still faster to, to lose Rush there, though, because you can get a couple slides in. Um, so you, that's why they do the, the last couple there. Team roll just really, really consistent so far throughout this relay. Um, maintaining the lead. These other teams are definitely keeping pace with each other, but they're gonna have to do something special to catch up to team roll at this point. Yeah, solid play. Um, you know, now that all the runners are out of Gemini, they gotta be breathing. Oh! Oh! oh. Wow! wow. Cassio, team Cassio. <laughs> Cassio is going for it all. That, that probably saves about a second total or something like that going for Yeah, those you counts. save it a decent amount of time, actually. By canceling Rush early, you can get some of those single block slides in. It's very difficult to get underneath that one uh, couple of those cloud uh, bullets. And uh, wow, that's, uh, that's something that uh, I was not expecting to see. So very impressive. Yeah, it was incredible. Not, not a race-friendly strat there. And moving into hard man stage, uh, yeah, to be quite honest, these last four robot masters, the order can be switched up just a little bit. We really just wanted to get uh, Rush Jet and Magnet and Shadow Blade. Fatso nailed it also. Oh, okay, we got some single block slides. Yeah. Yeah, not a whole lot of danger in this stage, hard man. There's, you know, not really pits or spikes or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the boss fight is fairly straightforward. Uh, you are going to be taking some damage, though, so you just need to make sure you maintain uh, over over 12 HP throughout the course of the stage, and you're usually good to go. You do have this oh. kind of... Ooh, getting knocked back down there. You do have this kind of uh, awkward proto-man fight in this stage as well, uh, with an arena that kind of has uh, some strange terrain. It could be difficult to take them out, but the runners will probably be switching to, to Magnet Missile to be uh, kind of complementing the damage on that fight here. Yeah, there's a lot of really annoying enemies in Hard Man stage. The monkeys, they have a lot of HP. These met dozers, their hitboxes are really strange in that uh, the the one kind of floats in front of the uh, the dam the one that you can damage kind of like gets blocked a bit, and sometimes you can shoot it right in the head and still not get a hit in. So Fasta had a really nice fight there on Magnet, uh, got a good pattern and was able to get a nice center kill. It's, it's actually not, you know, typically normal, I think, to see people fight Magnet with Shadow Blade, uh, but it is a secondary weakness that also does the same amount of damage as Spark Shot, so uh, it's just more, it's a more ideal weapon to fight him with just because you can throw Shadow Blade upward as well in case Magnet gives you a jump. So we're going to see that damage boost. Ooh, Very excellent. nice. Excellent. Uh, hard Man fight by uh, Christy on Team Roll there. Hardman does kind of stun you when he, when he hits the ground, but if you take damage at the right time, you can continue to deal damage to him. And uh, yeah, that was just an excellent fight and didn't uh, miss any shots. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of damage, like uh, Sinister alluded to earlier about how you want to have more than 12 health. It's because he does six damage with his body and you need to take two hits. Um, one uh, so you can be inside of his hitbox and the second one to get you hit out of the stun, so. Um, Kind of a scary fight if you're uh, second guessing your health and you're coming into the, the room. Christy's already into Spark now. This is his last Robot Master of the eight. This is a really straightforward stage. Just a couple of well-timed slide jumps and reducing lag. You want to get rid of most of these enemies like almost as soon as they appear. It's kind of a common theme in this game to be quite honest. And the use of the uh, Magnet Missile here is just such a powerful weapon. Um, it's once you've gotten it, you want to switch it as much as possible just to take down some of the trash enemies around here. Ooh, going up for that Met Dozer kill again. 
Magnet, you actually, if you kill everything in your path, you actually don't have enough Magnet to do this uh, stage. Um, but now they actually changed it up where they're starting to switch to Shadow and killing more than one of these junk blocks that you're about, about to see him kill a couple. Um, and so they actually switched to Shadow earlier than normal. Uh, it's a little bit newer strat. And uh, then they're already on the weapon that they need for the Sparkman fight, so it's perfect. Into this last elevator room, it's actually very consistent. There's only a couple single block slides there, but um, Christy's through, very easy. Wow, oh, an excellent Proto Man kill on uh, Cassio's screen there. Christy gets the best pattern too. So Prizzy will be our first player heading into the Doc Robot stages where they're actually going to refight the uh, bosses we just saw in, in Mega Man 2. I believe all of our players are going to be taking the same route here. You don't, it, at this point you have all your weapons so the routing doesn't really matter. Uh, but I believe they're going to go Gemini first here. Gemini being the probably the hardest of the Doc Robot stages so it's kind of just like just get out of the way so you can feel a little bit more comfortable as you progress through the rest of them. Yeah, the Doc Robot stages are kind of like the unique touch on uh, Rockman 3. Um, from here on out in the series, there's a few extra stages kind of in between the Robot Master stages and the Wily stages, and it's just it's pretty interesting. So you could sort of replay four uh, of the previous levels just with a slight variation on it, using most of the same enemies, and with a special uh, visit from our Rockman 2 bosses being placed inside the Doc Robot machines. Pretty interesting. Yeah, a really nice first sc uh, first screen there for Prissy. Um, those Magnet Missiles, that room looks really good when you fire them in the right spots, and uh, the missiles just do all the work for you. And he's going to be coming up to the first boss here. He's going to be fighting Flashman. This is actually one of the few reasons that they are playing on the Rockman version. The Flashman fight is just a little bit faster. As you'll see, his, his flash is very quick, and it, I believe he can even get a flashless fight. Is that right, Chelmy? Yeah, if you can uh, if you can get your uh, movement really good and jump over him. Oh, he doesn't get the first hit in, but he does get the jump over top and uh, gets a nice center kill. So pretty nice, pretty nice fight there. Yeah, one of the few uh, actual gameplay differences to note between Rockman 3 and Mega Man 3 in that uh, in that Flashman fight, um, the, his time stopper only stops you for just a very small amount of time in the Rockman 3 version, and it's a little. Ooh. And Prizzy taking a death, but he's got enough of a buffer that uh, he's still got a fairly solid lead. And Bastet CC, he's kind of been separating himself from the other players there, and he's going to be heading into his first Doc Robot stage now. So things are getting interesting. Yeah, so what happened there basically is if you try to slide again before your previous slide has finished, you actually jump in this game. And so unfortunately, Prissy tried to chain a slide a little bit too close together and uh, accidentally jumped, and then his iframes wore off. So um, something in that room that can be very, very scary is uh, mistiming a slide, but nailed it the second time, so really nicely done. Nice job there, and he'll be taking on uh, Bubble Man this time. So just like when we saw before, you can get either the one, two, or three bubble pattern. You're hoping for one bubble. Reduce that lag. Looks like a two bubble. Not bad. Very nice. Yeah, these dock robots are pretty much identical to their Mega Man 2 counterparts, uh, with some uh, small exceptions of the larger hitbox, and a couple of them do a slightly different contact damage. But besides that, their AIs are almost identical. All right, so let's see if Prissy gets a trick here. Yo, All right, he nailed yeah, it. Yeah, there it is. The music de despawn. So yeah, so again, we're despawning the music, but this time we're doing it in a slightly different and probably to most people, more scary way. Basically what we're doing is we're dying on the exact same frame that we transitioned the screen. Um, but the game uh, doesn't really register that you've died because you're transitioning, but it still plays the death sound and that actually stops the music. And again, this is a, a decent time save again, despawning the music, about a two and a half second time save. So uh, really important. This setup is very consistent. Um, the one that Prissy used there looked like the Ohan setup, so really nicely done. And Bassett CC approaching the end of the stage here. A little short on health, but it, it hopefully won't matter.
Yeah, Bubble does only do two damage with a bullet. Yeah, he's just electing the tank. That's probably a, a good I, idea. I don't blame him at all. Meanwhile, Prizzy mashing with those teeth. <laughs> nice, nice kill there. Nice fight there. Yeah, a, a big theme of this game becomes that uh, uh, damage boosting becomes a very, very helpful thing uh, for a lot of the fights. So Prissy's in the same sort of room that we saw in Shadow earlier, except this one uh, has a few more enemies. Uh, we were hoping for a couple magnet drops there. Um, he only got one, it looks like, so... Okay, watch watch this cool little thing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> little, little sprite glitch there, it looks pretty cool. So again, yeah, Heatman again with the, the 30, 60, 90 patterns. Uh, something that's neat though, oh, Prissy didn't get it there. Oh, and unfortunately he didn't get it. You can get a double hit on Heatman, and I'm sure we're going to see it from, for sure, one of the runners. Um, but if you hit Heatman on the frame he comes out of his charge, uh, he won't uh, go back into it another charge. It won't register that you were, hit, you were hitting him. And so you can hit him a second time again once his iframes drop, getting a, a double hit. So. Thankfully, though, even though Prissy did not get the double hit, he got a very, very uh, decent pattern from Heat. Some, some shorter, um, some shorter charge cycles. So moving into Doc Needle, uh, I find this stage pretty interesting, and for the most part, all of the Doc Robot stages. Since we have all of the Robot Master weapons, these stages can kind of be designed to use those weapons, particularly the Rush, uh, Rush Coil, uh, well, Rush Jet, particularly, and in this. Uh, in, in Doc Needle, there's this long rush jet section that I find uh, pretty interesting, uh, just to cross the entire pit. If, if they make any mistakes, though, they do have to come back, and that will waste quite a bit of time. So first up, we're gonna have <laughs> Airman here. He's got those save five patterns, but this time you have a slide. So if you get one of the bad patterns in Mega Man 2, it's actually a good pattern here, and that is the one he gets. So he can slide under those tornadoes and just not fair. Just mash him out. Ooh, nice, really light. nice. So this parachute section that Prissy's coming into now, again, flying uh, on jet, you want to kind of jump off again, sort of like Duckfist mentioned earlier, uh, despawning your sprite off the top of the screen, which is great, but you see these dragonflies, if you're off the top of the screen, they try to go to the very bottom, and then they track, they try to track you and then come back, um, but if you can make them go low enough, you can actually despawn them off the side of the screen, and Prissy's nailing these despawns, getting a lot of them. And again, reducing enemies on the screen reduces the lag, so I, I don't think he missed a single one there. That was really good. Yeah, was furthermore, nice. it's possible to actually hit enemies on the bottom of the screen by yeah. jumping too high off the top at the wrong time, and that can be quite quite annoying, but no issues here. Uh, to note, Fast and CC did have a pretty good heat fight, so he's, he's gaining a little bit of ground there. And this is one of the few times you're going to actually see, well, the only time really you're going to see Hard Knuckle really used outside of the top top man re, uh, refight. And uh, you kind of, because uh, Hard Knuckle is a really slow weapon, you kind of just want to like shoot it above Crash, and then he'll just jump into it. Um, Crash Man moves a lot faster than the Hard Knuckle, so you might as well utilize his speed uh, to your advantage. Ooh, he's getting away from him a little bit there, but still got him. Fast at CC, not getting a very good pattern from the Airman refight there, unfortunately. Yeah, so Prissy's heading to his last dock stage. Um, this stage, I know, gave a lot of people problems um, just because Quickman is at the end, and uh, like Duckus mentioned, uh, he's one of those bosses that deals a lot more contact damage in this game versus uh, Mega Man 2. He does 8 damage with his body, so um, since they usually get there without full health... <laughs> oh, blocks, please. Since they do get there without full health, uh, that fight can be pretty scary. However, the boomerangs still don't deal very much, so they want to try to take damage off those instead. Yeah, plus the combination of the much larger hitbox. Uh, it could be quite nasty. Quick Man, uh, Quick Man Doc Robot is by far the scariest Doc Robot. So again, 
metal is kind of nice that magnets track him, so... Um, the only real randomness to that fight is sort of based on his, uh, his height jumps. Uh, Prissy looked like he might have actually tried to go for another audio despawn there. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get it. That one's a lot scarier because if you do die trying to get that one uh, before hitting the transition, you have not hit the checkpoint yet, and you'll have to redo the entire beginning of the stage and fight Metal Man again. So, not worth. Yeah, in a race, it's not really uh, what you want. But again, if you can get it, it saves uh, a little over a second. So, all right. So it's time for uh, the snakes. Yes, yeah, so you can fight him with Gemini or Snake. Uh, most people just go with Snake because it's easier to control. Because if you miss with Gemini, uh, all Havoc can break loose. Ooh, taking a body hit early. Yeah, those body hits deal about 8 damage, which looks like is well, that what Grizzly has than that left. Now. So he's got to be careful. He cannot afford to take another hit. Purposely getting there hit by the boot. Right. Makes it through. Team Roll is our first team onto the Wily stages. Yeah, doing a, do, doing a really nice job making sure he hits the the, uh, the boomerangs. So one more Breakman fight before the Wily stages. This would be a good time for some more donations, Edo Bean, if you've got them. And boy, do we. We have a $1,000 donation from Mr. Cab 68 <laughs> Saying good luck to the runners. Let's go Team Roll. We have a $751 donation from Ane Patel, who says, mad shout outs to all the runners. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and all the skills I've seen this week put mine to shame. You guys provide a lot of hope and joy to many people. Sinister One, when are you gonna run? We also got a $50 donation from the B <laughs> B1G Nasty that says, Mega Man 3 is one of my favorite games of all time, and that title theme hits me in the nostalgia every time. I had to donate during this relay. We also have a $35 donation from Matthew that says, Super Fighting Robot, Mega Man. Christy gets a really nice uh, slide across the spikes there. You want to take damage off the little penguins so that you can uh, get the double slide, and uh, really nicely done there. So this boss has a lot of RNG. Uh, if Prissy gets a bad pattern, he can lose up to 13 seconds versus the, the fastest possible, possible pa pattern. Uh, you're going to want to notice which way uh, the turtle is moving, or sorry, the, the Kamigawa maker is moving. Uh, right is good, left is bad. Yeah, the turtles will always come out of the maker in the same pattern. Uh, they'll go left, right, right, left, right, but the maker will go left or right, and we want to we want to see right movements like that right there. And that's a really good turtle. That's the other one. Right. It's sort of it's like about an average pat. Yeah, mediocre luck. Mediocre. There, and in the meantime, both Team Rush and Team Auto moving onto the Wily stages. Colonel Fatso on a team beat finishing up uh, the Doc Robots as well here. So, Wily 2 is a kind of interesting stage because this is the only stage, I mean, unless you count Wily 5 and 6, but this is the only stage that doesn't actually have a checkpoint. Um, so if they die to the Yellow Devil in some form, they will have to do the entire stage again. Uh, this fight has a quick kill. Uh, the idea is to try to take damage boosts in a very specific p position so that you are uh, right underneath the eye and you can jump straight up and just mash Shadow Blades straight up into his eyeball. It takes 10 Shadow Blades to kill him. Uh, missing it in one cycle costs you 18 seconds, so it's really critical to, to try to get that. Easy Devil. Let's see it. Kind of getting some practice mashes in there. Nice first jump. Beautiful. Easy. Easy. Every time. So we're into Wily 3. Uh, this stage, again, pretty straightforward. Um, 
I, I have a feeling we're going to see something pretty special here coming up, though, in the moving block rooms right after the checkpoint. So watch Prissy's screen when he gets to those ones. And you're going to see maybe something pretty unique right in the next room. Oh! oh okay. <laughs> so there's a way that you can do a wiggle zip and, uh, and make it about a half second faster, but uh, incredibly dangerous. Uh, he got the, uh, uh, the zip that, uh, obviously it doesn't kill you, but uh, you don't really save any time with it. Awesome job. <laughs> he also did something to the boss that um, I didn't mention yet. Um, so this game typically doesn't allow you to pause when you have a weapon on screen. Uh, however, for whatever reason, it doesn't check uh, for your rush shots and your and for any weapon that you have uh, with rush. So when you shoot a rush bullet and then switch to a different weapon, that bullet will take on the properties of that other weapon. Fast the nailing easy also, really nice job. So basically what happened is, is he switched to top spin, which is the weakness for the uh, hologram robot. And uh, since top spin has a piercing type uh, property, uh, it hit him every single frame that the bullet was inside and just basically insta-kills him. It's, it's a really fast kill. Frizzy on into the refight, so slight variation here. You're going to want to end the fight on the left-hand side of the screen near the teleporter there, as you just saw he did. So the strategies are actually a little bit different because of that, and there's also a few opportunities to use different weapons than when you were doing the, the eight robots initially. Casio crushes easy also. We'll, we'll see if Fatso goes for this zip as well. I know we talked about it. No, he's just going to not. teams with the Yellow Devil Quick Kill. So, so Fatso had a kind of scary fight there because you want to try to get more than five hits on the first jump. You have the most amount of time in the first jump to get uh, as many hits as possible. The second jump, you have less time. So only getting five hits on Ooh. that first jump was, uh, was really scary. Uh, in our first appearance it. of the Nadua laser <laughs> on Team Roll. Yeah, showing why you don't want to miss the shot. Yeah, that laser just will bounce around forever until it finally will go off screen. It feels like forever anyway. Nice fight there on Needle. Fast at CC making his way into the refights. So Prissy's health is a little too low. He can't take a hit from Magnet to take him out of that pattern, so he's got to wait, wait out the shield. <laughs> Best friend. So Christie's through refights. Two stages to go. Now coming up here on the on Wily Machine Three, um, this is kind of an interesting fight. Using the Search Snake, since there's so much lag caused by some projectiles and sprites in this game, you're gonna we're gonna see uh, Prissy throw at least one Search Snake here and jump and use that lag to actually mash out as many shots as possible on the top form here. Yeah. Oh, we jumped a little early, unfortunately. So he's gonna have to finish it off okay. with Shadow Blade, but nice fight. So the next stage is the final stage. So time will be coming up for team roll in about 30 to 40 seconds here. Uh, not much to say really about this fight other than uh, first phase, Shadow Blade, second phase, either top spin or snake, depending on what the runner wants to do. Uh, it's faster to do a snake kill because it's a faster menu, um, but you have to mash snakes, whereas top spin, it'll basically one shot him, similar to the hologram robot. Okay. Get, re get ready on time for a team roll. Time! Oh! And Prizzy finishing it off in style for Team Roll there, mashing it out with the snakes. 
Oh, Fasta on Team Rush, getting a fast Wiley Machine 3 kill. So yeah, we're looking uh, great job there by Team Roll. Wow, what, a, what an impressive finish. Really consistent play just across all three games. Very solid performance. Fasta coming into his final fight here with Gamma. So again, time will be coming up for Team Rush. And time. Time. <laughs> Something to note here. Uh, you might want to watch uh, Team Beat right now. Fatso is going to do this kill uh, without shooting leg snakes. Really good. Oh, really good. Oh, leg snakes. So because you have no leg, uh, this fight is this that that fight is a lot harder without the leg snakes. You have to mash a lot faster, and uh, uh, really impressive mashing there by him. Yeah, it's seven shots, I believe, to get yeah. one jump, which is not really trivial tough. at all. That's that's pretty tough. Time is going to be coming up here for Team Auto here, as well as Team Beat. Ooh. Time to oh. And time for Team Beat. Excellent runs. Excellent job by all our teams. It was an amazing performance. We are going to actually have an interview in a little bit with the team captains, so you can hear a little bit from them. Uh, <laughs> they're calling for the rematch already. All right, for now, we're going to throw it back over to Edo Bean. Thank you so much, guys. And once again, give a round of hands to our commentators, Sinister, Charlie, and Doug Vest. Did an amazing job. Welcome, guys, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2018. I am Edobie. I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of donations since we didn't get to go through a couple of them. 